Tomas, Marco here from Aviator Life CS. Welcome back to my channel. And today we'll keep talking about the electrical system. And this is uh, part three. We are going to talk today about the uh, standby power system and uh, electrical system normal operations. So let's start with the standby power system. The standby power system supplies 115 volts AC and 24 volts DC power to important electrical components when normal AC power is not available from the engine or APU generators. The standby power system consists of AC standby bus, DC standby bus, battery bus, hot battery bus, switched hot battery bus, main battery, and auxiliary battery if it is installed. And here on the diagram, you can see all of these components, uh, AC standby bus, DC standby bus, hot battery bus, switch hot battery bus, and uh, battery bus here. With no other power source available, the battery can supply power for a minimum of 30 minutes or 60 minutes if an auxiliary battery is installed. Battery power is the emergency source of power for the DC standby bus, the battery bus, and the static inverter. The static inverter changes 24 volt DC battery power to 115 volt AC power for the AC standby bus. There are two controls related to the standby power system. The standby power switch has three positions and is normally in the auto position with the guard closed. So you can see it here in the auto position. In auto, the standby buses and the battery bus are supplied power from their normal power sources. But if all sources of AC power are removed, the standby power control unit automatically changes the standby system to battery power. The power change can occur on the ground or in the air. In the off position, the AC and DC standby buses and the battery bus are disconnected from all power sources, normal or battery. The standby power off light illuminates when power is removed from one or more of these buses. And here you have the standby power off light in the panel. In the bad position, battery power is now manually connected to the standby power system. The battery switch is the other standby power control. You can see it here. The on position always energizes the switched hot battery bus and the other circuits to automatically change to battery power if normal power is not available. Switching the battery switch to off removes all power from the standby power system and the switched hot battery bus. Here you have a list that identifies the significant equipment that operates when the main battery and the auxiliary battery are the only source of electrical power. So please uh, feel free to uh, go through each of them and read what we have available when we have a main battery or auxiliary battery. All right. So in this couple of pictures, we can see the basic equipment operating for the captain instrument panel and for the first officer instrument panel. And the condition is the same for both pictures. Airplane configuration is in flight, battery switch on, and the standby power switch auto. All right. Now let's talk about the electrical system normal operations. And here I'm just focusing on the electrical part of all these checks we have to do. So the preliminary pre-flight procedure, captain or first officer, the preliminary pre-flight procedure assumes that the electrical power-up supplementary procedure is complete. And we will talk about the supplementary procedure in a different video. So for the pre-flight procedure, it says electrical panel set. And let's see what we have here. Battery switch, guard closed. Cap util power switch on. This one here, IFE passenger seat power switch on here. A standby power switch, let's show it here. Guard closed, 
verify that the standby power off light is extinguished. So this light should be extinguished. Verify that the battery discharge light is extinguished. This light here. Verify that the TR unit light is extinguished. And verify that the LED light is extinguished. Generator drive disconnect switches, guards closed. You can see them closed here. Verify that the drive lights are illuminated. These lights are illuminated. Bus transfer switch, guard closed, is closed. Verify that the transfer bus off lights are extinguished. So these lights are going to be extinguished. Verify that the source of lights are extinguished. And verify that the gen off bus lights are illuminated. Okay. When the APU gen off bus light is illuminated, APU generator bus switches on. Verify that the source of lights are extinguished. Verify that the transfer bus of lights are extinguished. All right. So if we keep reviewing the before taxi procedure now, generator one and two switches on. So we select both switches to the on position. For the shoot down, it says electrical power set. Again, we'll go to the panel here. If APU power is needed, verify that the APU generator off bus light is illuminated. APU generator bus switches on, on, and on. Verify that the source of lights are extinguished. If external power is needed, verify that the ground power available light is illuminated. This one here, ground power switch to on. Verify that the source of lights are extinguished. So we'll check that these lights are extinguished. So with this one, we finished uh, part three of the electrical system. I hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. And if you are not subscribed to my channel yet, please do it now. And if you think these videos could be useful for somebody else, please share them. And that's going to help me a lot to grow the channel. Next week, we will finish the electrical system with part four. And uh, we will be covering abnormal operations. And uh, we will also talk about the FCOM volume one supplementary procedure for the electrical system. I hope you stay tuned for those videos. Until then, guys, please take care and hope to see you soon.